Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Waalaikum Salaam Should we be studying physics and chemistry to understand better? Thank you very much. I really appreciate the Muhammadan, Muhammadan Prophet Sallallahu yeah, the prophetic realities of Sayyidina Muhammad You study what has an inclination within your heart. If you, if you have a yearning for biology and understanding that you want to understand biology, you want to understand chemistry, physics, uh, science, any of the sciences, any, anything that you feel a calling to. Even we've talked before on computer sciences. So it depends upon who's out there listening and what their natural inclination then to go and study it in a Muhammadan haqqaiq way, right? You can study medicine but at the same time you can hear what the shaykhs are teaching to understand the prophetic reality of the medicine, the prophetic reality of, of math, the prophetic reality of these sciences. So whatever people's callings are they would apply the Muhammadan haqqaiq towards that reality to make that uloom blossom in Allah's way. Right, so there's a lot of programmers in computer science, IT guys out who watch these things. So they understand according to IT, oh machine language, how the shaykh knows about machine language and binary codes and all these things. Means that these realities are meant for people to take back into their particular interest. If there's psychologists out there then they understand the perfection of psychology is with tariqah. Because the tariqah knows the reality of a nafs. If you leave out the element of a nafs in psychology then what the heck are you teaching? You left out the biggest criminal in the whole game. So what is it possibly that you're teaching? Nothing. So the Naqshbandiya has the perfection of psychology, has all the bases of these haqqaiqs understand all of those realities. That what, what, what is the nafs doing on people? If you leave the element of the nafs out then you're just saying this person did like this and the person is like that. But you, you left the biggest element of that person out and the biggest enemy of that person is their nafs. So alhamdulillah the tariqahs and the haqqaiqs they have uh, uh, every, every uloom and knowledge that Allah want them to have and especially the last days their, their knowledges are, are are essential. So when, when they're telling people that these sicknesses that are coming and we described before, if, if they prescribe for you parasite medicine, medicines that good for parasites and people were laughing on the news, oh, these are for like parasites and what the heck, what the heck. Because remember the science and the science mind is is of a complete opposite than the reality of the heart. Those whom rely on their science only then they have a corrupt understanding. Those whom rely upon their heart and their heart illuminates their science then they are in a common perfected understanding. So then when Allah want to inspire and teach them that these creatures that are coming to attach themselves and make a human sick they are parasitical, oh, means they are parasites. So anti-parasite anti medicine would obviously work good against the movement of that parasite within your body. And it's, 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 it's interesting for people to study what is a parasite. Now in our day and age there are worms that can enter your body and they're considered parasites. And this worm that enters into your body can actually begin to affect your neurotransmitter. Can you imagine a worm enters the body and begins to affect your brain? It's hijacked your nerves. A little parasite you give no look to, a worm, a bug. The bug and the Lyme disease that goes into the body, that parasite begin to shut down your, your immune system. That's an alien, that, that, that is understanding these creatures entering into you and hijacking your body function, your physiology, your neurology, all of these. 
So it's already on our existence. There are so many parasites that have enter into a creation and they begin to command the creation, its mind, its thoughts, its, its, its body function. So we'll study a little bit about parasites, it give you more understanding to the jinn world. Because the ones whom are attacking they're not the mu'min, they're coming to be a parasite off of humanity. That was the example in the matrix and that's why these movies were like a sharat from Allah that for, for them they just want to use you like a battery. They're going to lock into you and use your functions. You say, how could they be like that? Already there are like that, there are worms that can do that to you. They enter into your body and your, your brain doesn't function anymore. How, how a worm is controlling and driving your head. Lyme disease and, and ticks and they can shut down your immune system. So there's so many parasites. So it's only natural that in a, in, a, in a battle like this at particular times then anti-parasite medicine would make sense. For the parasite value of this creature that coming and attacking and how it's trying to replicate within your system and how do they spread themselves is through viruses, right? So then it would be worthwhile for someone to study what is a virus in computer understanding. Then you'll understand why these jinn use virus to overtake you. You say, oh, it's just a cold Shay, we got a cold from someone, okay you don't have a, you know that's not, you're, 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 you're using your head with us, that's not going to work, you have to use your heart. So you study a virus, Hans Zishan, if you want to take over someone's computer you send them a virus. That's how the whole system of the, it was integrated into computers. So when these uh, espionage countries they want to take over your power system. What do they do? They send a virus into your computing system and then basically hijack it through their keyboard. Your computers are now working for them in that example. They shut your power off, they turn your power on, they open the floodgates for your dams and we do anything they want. Small time virus they send through your email and all of a sudden they're taking all your codes out of your computer. So the concept of a virus was like a Trojan horse, I'll send something into you to overtake you and your functionality. So when Prophet is describing these pandemics, these are these marada, these are these nefarious creatures coming. Why are they coming? What are they trying to accomplish? So by means of viruses what are they doing? You think that, oh let's just get 10 people sick. The ones who die they were not strong enough they didn't want them, if they are going to die from it they don't want the old and crippled, let them go is their thought. But the ones that were strong enough to survive their viral infection and intrusion into their being they want them and they're going to take them. And their eyes will be their eyes, their hearing will be their hearing, their speaking will be their speaking, their hands will be their hands and their feet will be their feet. So much so that they will become <laughs> and it's not Rabbaniyoon, <laughs> it's not the power of kun fayakun, right? So shaitan has his version, he's using it through that, that's what a virus means. A virus doesn't mean runny nose, those are the symptoms of what you're, you're getting. But viral and virus means something is trying to come in and overtake your system. If you understand what's overtaking it then you understand the importance of the zikr, the madad, the practices. So that we reach hadith al Qudsi in which Allah overtakes our hearing, Allah overtakes our seeing, Allah overtakes our speaking, our speaking. So much so that you become Rabbaniyoon, so the two are now fighting in a battle. Either you want to give yourself to the Divine or these things are continuously sending different. And when they can't get into your computer one way they send it in another email. So you, have you ever seen virus attack software? They show you on a map 10,000 attacks today, do you think it, the, there's a day where it doesn't attack? So people ask, oh Shaykh is this going to end? Do you think the, the, the party's over for them? 
<coughs> it's just the beginning. So study viruses and mm -hmm. parasites, they don't understand what, what the, is capable of. Antigen. Huh? Antigen. Antigen, yeah. For you to have a good uh, strength they call it antigen. That means you have a strong immunity system, the word is called antigen. <laughs> they want to give you viruses so you can have a strong immunity and then they check your immunity. As soon as you get your thing you go check your immunity, they call that check as an antigen to see if you have the ability to fight off a viral attack. The one who wrote all of this, <laughs> he put his signs everywhere, alhamdulillah. Uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, how can one make their electrons spin faster? More love, read the Lala Khirat. Means that your spin speed, if we're, if we're understanding the variables there's three, attraction, centrifugal force and rise. So what was the core? The attraction. Without the attraction there's no spinning, there's just walking barely. So how do I increase my attraction for the love of Prophet and that was the state of faith, oh, Ya Umar you have to love me more than you love yourself. So it means that when you love the reality more than you love yourself you're directing all your energy in that direction. The salawats, the zikr, the attendance, the mawlid, uh, go and give food for the love of Prophet do good deeds, be of service. Whatever you can do to put your entire being in that direction then that love is moving towards Prophet He takes that love and then begins to send back an immense amount of love and, and khushya and that's why we're Rasulul Kareem is one that whom if you even gave a smile to that reality Prophet would go out of his way to give back a smile. Immense love and generosity that Allah was astonished, khuluqul azeem because Allah created that reality that you are of a magnificent character. So this is a love that never wasted and never harmed, nobody was harmed by this love for the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So that's the core. If we build that love and we do the dalal akhirat, we do the recitations, the salawats, that's why you do 10,000, 5,000, 20,000 salawats a day so that why? Because you're building an immense love. Immense love then creates what? Immense centrifugal force. So the more love you have and you can't get in you're spinning even faster, 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 faster and now your rise is very strong. That's why many people may see the, these ashiqeen very tall in their dream. They distinguish that they are, they are a very big nature, not that they're tall physically only but because I see them so big in their ishq and their love for the Divinely Presence, inshaAllah.